it's time. The DS30 series from Pard, their new night and day vision scope. I've had a good two to three weeks to play with it. You've been banging on at me to do a full review. It's coming up, it's gonna be a long one. Grab yourself a coffee or a beer, sit down, buckle up, here it comes. YouTubers and welcome to another video from Air Gondology. On this channel we do load of air rifles, air pistols as well as technology reviews and if you're new here hit that subscribe button and don't forget to check down in the YouTube video description down there you'll find a lot of good details um, about a Facebook group and questions and answers all of that lot so you know the score hit the subscribe button. I always get asked just crack on with it Steve show us the footage here we go here is a little bit of footage for you of me ratting with the new pod scope you like that little bit of teaser there'll be much much more of that to come later but um yeah the new part let's start off with the box i wouldn't normally do this but so much attention to detail has been put in just the packaging it really fills me with confidence and well done part you know instead of just sending it out in a standard brown box you've put a lot of detail in this and um it does inspire confidence and quality um, it's very Apple-esque, you know, the box is just beautiful, um, really, really nice. You won't be disappointed when you get it, um, but yeah, I like that. And I just wanted to point that out. In the box, depending on the version of the scope you get, there are multiple versions, I'll discuss them in a second, but basically you'll get your scope, you'll get a detachable eyepiece, rubberized eyepiece on here, you'll get an 18650 battery, You'll get a set of scope rings for it. You'll also get a cleaning cloth, um, a USB cable for it as well, as well as a good set of um, English, believe it or not, good English instruction manuals. But um, yeah, very, very nicely packaged. Lots of good quality in here. Um, really inspires confidence when you get it. But let's take a look at the scope itself. Let's get the elephant out of the room straight away. How much is it going to cost? It's not cheap, okay? Um, the official prices are not out yet as of the recording of this video, which is, um, I think, November, mid-November. But check out in your local PAR dealer places where you'd normally go. But rough indications are between 700 and 950 UK pounds, um, depending on which version you get. But like I said, official numbers and prices, you'll see them very, very soon. 
So, yes, it's expensive. Let's just deal with that at the moment. Okay, what different versions of this do you get? Well, it gets quite complicated. Um, you get the DS, and that's the name. So let's break the name down. The DS, DS Digital Scope. Then you can get the free, free, or the free five. So DS free free or DS free five. The free free and the free five. What's the difference? Well, the major difference that I can tell you is it's the resolution of your viewing objective here. When you're looking through here, the screen in here, because this is a digital scope, um, it's the resolution in there. Personally, I would say go for the free five, uh, which this is here. Um, that's the major differences between them. The next num set of numbers is the DS35, which this is, and then you get 70 or 50. This is the 70. You can get a 70 or 50. And if you look at the websites, it says objective 70 or 50, I, the diameter across here. That is not true. It is the focal length, um, not the diameter of the objective lens. So the 50 has a wider field of view. The 70 has a tighter field of view. So DS, 35, 70 I've got here, and then you get two extra letters at the end, basically RF. And RF stands for a rangefinder. So you can get this with or without the rangefinder on it. Now, I don't see any point in buying one of these without a rangefinder because then you lose the ballistic calculations. So um, that's how the numbering system works. Personally, I will tell you straight away now, instead of having to wait to the end of the video, if you're running air rifles and shooting under 50 meters, personally, I would go for the DS-35-50 RF. That's what I would go for. There also are rumors that they will be bringing out with the IR Torch two different variants for 850 nanometers or 940 nanometers. So work all those combinations out there. Free, free, free five, 50, 70, RF or non RF, IR for 850 or 940. You can see there's going to be a lot of combinations out there. So um, that's basically what it all means. Let's walk around the scope. Let's do our usual back to front sort of with the scope. Let's start at the back. So at the back, we have an eye cap here that helps get rid of stray light. A lot of people don't like to use these. Easily screws on, screws off. Um, very nice. Then we have the viewfinder through here. Now, this scope is unique. If you've ever looked through any digital scopes before, you look through a round piece here and you see a square screen. And it's horrible. Hey, I hate that. The ATNs are like that. The old pod was like that. When you look through here, you see a round digital screen. And I just, it's really hard to put it into words, but it just feels natural. It just feels good. And the screen quality through here is amazing. It's one of the clearest digital screens I've ever seen. All the menu systems show up in there beautifully. You have an ocular adjuster here where we can turn to suit your eyes. Then we move forward and we've got a set of buttons. The first major button is the on off button. Long press will switch it on, long press will switch it off. Single press will put it into hibernate mode. Very good for saving battery. Quick press, bang, it's instantly on. When you long press it to switch it on, it comes on within three to four seconds. Very, very good. Then you have some menu buttons at the top here. One is for IR. Um, the other one is for start, stop recording. And the other one is for the range finding functionality. If you have range find. Moving across, we have a turret. The top turret here is a multifunctional dial and push button. So you can single press it, long press it, turn the dial clockwise, anti-clockwise, and it operates the menu systems. What looks like windage turrets, very, I love the way they've done this. It's not. This is where they stored the 18650 battery. Cute, I love that. They built that in to make it look like windage turrets. I think that is just absolutely fantastic. Um, really, really nice. The bit that I've missed is just the side here, there's a little cover. And in there is where you can put your SD card, 
So of course, this being a digital scope, you re can record videos and movies, as well as take in um, still photos all through the SD card there. But also in there, there is a USB um, connector. Uh, so that's so you can connect it directly to your computer to download the images or you can plug in there to charge up the 18650 battery but if you do that it will charge very very slowly uh, to protect the circuitry so it's always recommended to take the battery out and charge it on a good external battery and a very useful um, it's yes it's a mini HDMI cable which you'll see later it means basically you can plug an external screen into this if you do plug an external screen you lose the, the digital view through the end it's one or the other but you can and you'll see me do that later but um, very very nice then you have the included scope rings uh, they give you standard tubing on here um, I think it's Picatinny's they give you um, scope rings um, very very nice and good scope rings as well move forward and then we have the two units sat on the front here the two elephants in the room one is the rangefinder rangefinder it goes out to, i think about 1200 meters and i've tested it out to four five hundred meters and it works absolutely beautiful that's statically fixed and then we have an ir torch here which you can zoom in and zoom out like so and that all runs off the 18650 battery. These are all integrated. You cannot remove these. There are some Allen bolts there that I wouldn't do it. And you cannot upgrade. So if you decide to get the non-rangefinder one and then want the rangefinder, you can't upgrade. So make sure you choose wisely at the beginning. But um, rangefinder, all built in. And then your IR torch. IR torch has, I think it's four levels off, one, two, and three. Um, IR torch, I've tested it, it's good out to about 150 meters, but you can switch the IR torch off as well and put an external IR torch on. Um, very good, handy feature, I do like that. Then we move forward and we have the objective and there's the objective cap, so built in with the cap on here. But what's really nice is that there is, and if I can get this to work, there is an aperture adjuster so if in daytime, a lot of these IR, um, IR capable digital scopes have a problem in daytime of letting way too much light in, you can reduce that and put lens cap on and just reduce the light and that helps improve contrast. A lot of times we 3D, pre, 3D print things like this, but um, yeah, nicely done like so. But there's your integrated lens cap. There's your objective in there. Like I said, that is not a 50 or 70 diameter the objective length um, the focal length and then ah, I do like this there's your focus smooth buttery smooth with already a built-in handle on it so no need to go like the ATMs where you can't turn the bloody thing and then you have to put external grasp handles on beautiful nice and smooth and that is it ladies and gentlemen it is a beautiful looking piece of kit it's all proper aluminum um, aluminium should I say um, cast all really nice the part logos all over it absolutely wonderful the best thing about this this with the battery this full unit here so this is the DS 3570 RF with the battery 740 grams yeah, you heard that, 740 grams. This is lighter than my, MB, um, my NTC Mamba Pro. Now, the ATN, you get the ATN 4K 5 to 20, and then you put the ABL on it and a torch on it, you're looking at least 1,800 grams, maybe more depending on the torch you put on it. 740, titchy very nice so you're not suddenly got two kilograms sat on top of your rifle really really nice and i do like the fact that it's standard scope rings as well so that's your walkthrough that's talking about the different types that you can get and um, like i said the prices the availability etc will all be coming out very very soon Okay, so let's talk about some of the features of this scope. Now, this is a digital scope, so you have to have it powered on. You cannot look through it 
without it being powered on because it's just like a digital camera, like your mobile phone. Well, let's talk about some of the features. So we've already talked about it's digital. It's a digital scope day and night time. Um, you can switch it into different color modes as well. Black and white, orange, green modes, if you so wish. Um, really, really nice little features in there. You can take videos and photos on this as well. Now the video quality on this is sort of 1080p. 1080p is 1920 by, 10, uh, by 1080p. Uh, this is something I think is about 1440 by 1080 um, so it's a square format video even though you're looking through a round eyepiece and it looks like a round screen actually in the background is a square um, and it's a star viz sensor so it's very good at capturing low light but um yeah it records and gives you good video out and the videos you've been watching i'm leaving them the normal resolution so you can see what they look like um, but very good and very good frames per second as well one of the good features about this is the digital crosshair staying central there's a lot of talk about this um, for those that have used old older type of digital scopes you have a digital crosshair like so and when you want to do your zeroing you have to move your crosshairs around and sometimes you find the crosshairs right at the bottom of the screen or at the top of the screen which is really annoying and the only way of getting around that is by shimming your scope up and down to bring those crosshairs in the right place or using something like a zb light or an eagle mount <clears throat> but this has They've been sneaky, let's just say. What they've done here is you've got the square screen. And then can you imagine they've put a cutout, a circular cutout on it that's a bit smaller than the square screen. So what they can do is they can move their round cutout, which is the bit that you look through, and move it around and keep the crosshair central. Now that only works to certain limits. You know, if you're massively out in shimming up and down, then there's only so far they can, you can move the crosshairs. There's a whole load of waffle there. What does it mean? Well, basically, if your scope is set up and it's not massively out, you can zero it up and it moves the circle around the square sensor and keeps the crosshair in the middle. Now that works up to a certain level, obviously, if it needs to be tilted massively, it's not going to work. But it means it cuts out a lot of the shimming and keeps those crosshairs central. Really, really nice. And I like the way that they've done that. It's really clever. And you combine that also with your two shots um, zeroing in here. So it's just like any of the other digital scopes out there now. You take a shot, it freezes the screen for you and then you move the crosshairs left or right to where the shot landed and then basically that's two shot zeroing. Works very well just like any other digital scope. Of course being digital scope you can change the crosshairs. I think there's five or six different crosshairs in here from standard crosshairs to really complicated to round rapid fire ones. Really, really nice crosshairs. You can change the colours in there. Um, red, green, blue, yellow, white all really really nice in there there's five profiles in here so you can basically have five different setups stored in here so you could have five different rifles plonk this on and each zeroed up differently profile a b c d e um, with different zero points etc the big feature with this of course being the rangefinder is it has ballistic calculations um, this is absolutely brilliant. Now, with the old PARD systems, they didn't have ballistics. In the very, very latest of 008, they did add it in. But this is now standard ballistic calculations, all built in. What does that mean for those that don't know? Um, well, you would have seen with the, with the ratting shot that I showed you me clicking. What basically clicking the, the buttons there, and you'll see a little crosshair moving. What it basically means is that I can range find a rat by clicking the button. And then because I've inputted my bullet weight, my pellet weight, speed, etc., all of that in there, 
When I press the range button again, it puts me a second crosshair. In my case, I think it was green. I'm not sure what color it showed on the screen there. It puts a second crosshair that says, Steve, aim there. And basically, the flight path of the bullet is ballistically calculated with the computer inside. It tells you where to aim, and that's where your bullet or your pellet goes. And it works very, very well. Um, absolutely beautiful. But that's all linked into your profiles. So let me give you an example. If I put this on my FX and I was running at, sub, at let's say, 12 foot pound with a 2-2 pellet, I could set that as profile A with a different set of reticles, different set of colors and zeroed at, let's say, 20 meters. I can then set up the ballistic calculations for that 2-2. And basically, when I range find something, it tells me where to aim to hit the target. I could then take the 2.2 barrel out of the FX up there, I put a 177 barrel in it. I could set up profile B and have it zeroed at 50 meters with different pellet speeds, etc., and pellet weights. And again, press the ballistic calculations and it will tell me where to aim when I'm zeroed at 50, etc. And I can have up to five of these. And of course, I could slot this onto different rifles. So that's all built into it as well. Very, very nice. And each one of those has their own zero and two shot zero for each of those five profiles. Absolutely wonderful. You can also stream from here. Now, just at the time of recording this video, Pard are announcing that there is a streaming app. Um, I believe it's on, on iOS. I'm not sure if it's available on Android, but you can use third party ones to stream. So you can actually set up a Wi-Fi connection to this, look at your mobile phone and look at the screen on this so people can watch what you're doing. Um, all very, very nice. Um, so there's a lot of good features and I'm just touching on some of the features in here. There's um, recoil as um, awareness as well, so that when you take a shot, it will then go back and record three seconds or so before and make sure that it gets your shots recorded for you. Very, very nice. Lots of menu features. I will go through the menu features properly in a second video and go through all of the technical specs on how to set this all up. Otherwise, this video is going to be a really long. But anyway, let's go through some of the footage here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some daytime footage outside in my backyard, have a look at it, show you how it all works. And then I will show you some more of the nighttime footage as well. Um, and some of my findings with this. So um, let's just run those VTs and we'll come right back.
Okay, so I sat outside and I've got the pad hooked up through the mini HDMI cable onto my computer. Um, and I'll superimpose these. And really what I want to show you here is what you can see through the eyepiece. Now, this does not do it justice at all. Um, what you're seeing on screen, you remember you're looking at 1080p probably on YouTube, because that's how I record my videos. What you're looking here is that's obviously a lot smaller, but you've got to remember that is a lot closer to your eye and the quality of the glass is absolutely, in the picture is absolutely good. Now it does look a bit oval on the screen. That's a software, it's actually nice and round, um, but you can see there the, the quality of the image. And if I, if I zoom in, you can see there, and I can just change the focus a little bit very, very simply. Well, what I'm going to do to make this easy for you guys is I'm going to expand this out. Now, obviously, this is going to make it a little bit more pixelated for you, but hopefully now you can see a little bit more as I do a bit of a demonstration. So we'll just change the focus a little bit like so. And I can zoom back out. So here is my 5.6 times zoom, my 12 times, uh, my 11.2 times zoom. And what we'll do is we'll just have a look around the screen here. So on the screen, you can see if we start at the left-hand side, we've got a battery indicator. We have our Wi-Fi, whether it's switched on or not. Um, we have then our profile. So I'm using profile A, A, B, C, D, E. You've got five of them. Compass, north, 34 time. And then the zoom level, if we go to the right-hand side, the zoom level is at 11.2x at the moment. And the IR, currently the IR switched off. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the IR on for you in daytime. So just long hold press on the IR. And we'll need to do a little bit of a refocus. Now, obviously, it's not going to work brilliantly in daytime, but it gives you an idea. This is in daytime mode. If I press the IR button again, you'll see now that it cycles through the IR levels. Um, and there's three of them and then IR off. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to switch the IR off completely, go back to daytime mode and refocus us. So there we go, refocus. So the quality of this screen is absolutely, I can't stress it enough. This computer is not showing you it. Um, you do have to look through one of these. And then down on the left hand, on the right hand side now, you've got your elevation and your cant uh, markers and the range marker. What I'm gonna do is just zoom out and we'll show you how the ballistic calculations work. So if I just press now the range button, and you can see that I'm reading. You see the yellow box that appears? That's where the rangefinder's pinging. Um, I'm at 21 yards here. Um, and if I press and hold, press it again, it now gives me a little green cross. And just about make that out. I am actually zeroed at this, so it's saying aim at that center. Um, and that's how the ranging works on there. And then if we switch, um, switch it again, and it comes off. What I also do want to do is show you the menu system. So if we press the turret at the top, press it once, gives you the quick menu um, and you can see here where you can cycle through the menu and this again is exactly what you're seeing when you look through the viewfinder um, but let's go and have a look at some of the reticles because I know most of you will be interested in these so we'll come down and look at the styles so style 0 is switched off style 1 style 2 style 3 style 4 style 5 style 6 and there's six styles there. And we can also go and change the colors. So yellow, green, yellow, green, white, red. So those are your different colors there that you've got. And PARD may add to these with some software updates um, at a later date. So we'll come back and we'll put that back to white. And then we'll come back and change the style back. Um, and we'll have that style, I like that one. So. Again, I'll press and hold and save. So you have a quick menu system if it's a single press, but if you do a long press, and this is now where you can go in and set everything up about this. You, you know, um, how do you want this to measure in meters and yards, for example? Do you want picture in picture? Let me quickly show you picture in picture. So if we just switch that on, we now have an expanded, a an extra zoomed in version of what the center of the screen looks like there. Um, that's picture in picture for you. And then we're gonna switch that off. I personally don't like it. I'm gonna switch that off. But all sorts of things in here where you can set the gyroscopes up. Um, you can set the default colors, brightness, etc. All the way down to date time stamps and formatting, etc. So we'll just come out of that system there. And hopefully that gives you what you are actually looking through. What makes this scope very unique is you are looking through a round circular scope. 
image here. You're not looking at a flat um, um, rectangle, which you'll see in a lot of the all of the other night sights that are out there on the market. And I do love the the, the focusing on this is crystal clear. But I'm I'm going to stress this again. What you're seeing here. Okay, that's probably not going to come across very well on the on the YouTube video, but trust me, when you look through this, it just looks so natural and it is crystal clear. And at the end of the day, yes, it can take video. Um, the video is nice to have, but the video has so many qualities that determine so many factors that determine the quality, like how light is it, how much IR are you using, or how much are you wobbling around, you know, just to take a few things. Um, so it does record in HP quality, but more important is what you see through the viewfinder. And trust me, what you see through the viewfinder is sublime. They've done a very good job on this. Anyway, we'll go back to the office now and continue with the view review video. Okay, so we've gone through quite a lot on the new pod. I will be doing another video which really goes into depth in the menu systems, the ballistic calculators, the range finding, how to configure it, all of that. But that's at a later date. What's my thoughts on the new pod? Uh, as you know on this channel, I do tell you. Uh, very first thing I do need to get out of the way is thank you very much, Fortune, who is the sales director of PARD, who sent me through this um, for me to review it. I did not ask for it, they volunteered it. I did say that I would say whatever I thought, so um, yeah, the, but I do like PARDs, <laughs> you know I do, but I'll try to keep it as, uh, as fair as I can. And the other thing is, I will compare this to the ATN. It's, totally obvious you know this is a competitor to the ATN it's this or the ATN uh, 4k um, I've personally owned the ATN 4k and shot with it for a, a couple of years and I still go shooting with a friend who uses the ATN with the ABL etc but let's crack on what do I think about this let's go through the good points first first point I think this thing is a beautifully designed the workmanship through from the box, the packaging, the care, the fort, everything all in one nice little package that actually looks like a scope. You know, the old pods with the clip-ons, personally, I don't like them. Um, the Pard 8 was a great unit, but it just looked weird on a rifle. That just looks right. It's nice, and it really is. Another good point is, I, I know I've done the video and I raved about it, but this viewfinder through here, I have used pretty much all of the IR type night, division, um, night scopes out there. This is one of the best viewfinders I've seen. And the fact that it's nice and circular, I don't know why it just feels more natural. Instead of looking through a letterbox and looking at a square screen, you're looking at a fully illuminated round reticle through the viewfinder. I just love it. I think it's fantastic. And the quality through there is brilliant. Okay, the videos themselves may came out a bit grainy at night time, but that's due to lighting conditions and there's no light. You know, it's night vision. That's what you expect. But the view through here is fantastic and that said the video is actually pretty good as well um, and it just comes down to you know wh how you've lit it all up i love it um, i think that's fantastic the weight okay you know again i'm going to reference the atn if you take an atn 4k you add an abl and then you add a torch on it and you put the batteries and everything in you're looking at 1.8 kilograms on top of your rifle this, fully loaded, with a battery, 0.74 kilograms. Over a kilogram difference in weight. And that makes a huge, huge difference when you're walking around a farmyard or you're trying to shoot, you're carrying that extra weight on top of your rifle. It's just the size, it's beautiful. I, I absolutely love it. Um, I love it's fully packed full of the features now, and of course, including the ballistic calculator. Most of the pods all the way up until the very latest 008 was missing that, and that again was a difference between the ATN and the pods. It's now here, it's there, it works. The five profiles, the two shot zeroing, the picture in picture, the ballistic calculations, it's all there in such a tidy, tidy little package um you know 
I'm gushing. Yes, I am gushing. It is that good. I think it is that good. Um, what else have we got? The centralized crosshairs as well. Because they're using a circular um, reticle, so you're looking at the circular eyepiece, and behind it is the center of the square, they can move that around and keep your crosshairs central within limits, of course. And that just means your crosshairs stay central. It may not sound much, but if you've ever shot one of those rifles uh, with a scope on the, the crosshairs, and you haven't shimmed it and they're all the way up to the top left hand side you'll know the difference those that have seen it will know um yeah i do nearly dropped it <laughs> um and it's really really nice i like the fact that they've incorporated the aperture stuff in there i love the focusing it's so smooth um it's just really really good the ir itself I like the fact that you can switch the IR off because this IR only realistically, let's be honest, only goes out to about 150 odd meters on full beam and then you're using a lot of battery power. Get a separate IR torch on the side of your rifle, switch the IR off, use a separate one, use this for close in. The rangefinder works beautifully. I tested it personally out to about 500 meters. It's claimed up to 1200. I've got no reason to doubt them. Um, I just, it's nice. It's really, really nice. But let's talk about the downsides. Okay, so there are some downsides. Elephant in the room. Yep, price. If you're looking for a 400 pound scope that does all this, no, you're not going to get it. <laughs> These are expensive. Um, you know, at the moment, I don't know what the prices are, but they'll be coming out in the next few days, I'm sure. You're looking between seven and 950 pound, depending on which version you get. Um, and um, I, 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 Basically, at the end of the day, that price is the price. People pay that. You're paying for a lot of technology in here. You're paying for the night sight, the ballistic calculations in there, and that's what it is. So let's not argue about that. I know people will argue, yeah, that's too much money. Fine, you can't afford it, sorry. But um, yes, it's a very, very nice scope. And I know a lot of people who are thinking about selling stuff to get one of these. Uh, the field of view. I've got the DS... Free, uh, I've got the DS3570, so that's 70 objective length, uh, focal length. I personally think the 70 is too narrow uh, for air rifles, under 50 yards, 50 meters. Um, I would go for the uh, DS3550, which gives you a wider field of view. Um, because this is just too tight, I think it is. It's usable, yes, but it's it's just too tight. Um, and I do a lot of my rat shooting uh, between 15 and 40 yards. Um, and this is, you're just losing that field of view. So like I said, I personally go for the 50. That's no fault on the scope at all. Uh, it's just a recommendation. Uh, this will be great. You're shooting out 50 to two, 300 meters, foxing, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, that, you want that. But when you're close in, I would go for the uh, the short. And um, I'm reaching out to Pard, so um, Fortune, please send me the 50 so I can do a comparison because I know a lot of people will want to know. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's not the fault of the scope. That's just a recommendation. Um, the range finding. Okay, so with the range finder, and this again is on all night division and uh, night sites that have range finders or day ones that have range finders. You do go get a little yellow marker box. Um, you do need to move that yellow marker box in the software menu system and put it where the laser is flashing at your midpoint of where you shoot. Um, and this, like I said, this happens on all range finders. It's because of, through manufacturing tolerances, this range finder is never perfectly parallel to the bore sight of the scope. So if you've set the yellow box to be where the rangefinder is flashing at say 20 meters, at 70 meters, it will be flashing slightly different, just literally because that slight difference in the alignment of the scope and the ranger. Just think parallel tracks, train tracks. One track is the scope, the other track is the rangefinder. They're both parallel, therefore they're always the same distance apart, no matter how far. You take one track and you slightly move it off to the side, the tracks will then diverge. That happens on all of these things. And a recommendation to anyone, including PARD, is I would love to see you guys actually put zero in 
grub screws on your rangefinder so the user can just move it around and get it perfectly parallel so when it comes out the factory they can set it up themselves and get it like that but um, recommendation definitely is to move to yellow crosshairs find out where you shoot so I shoot between 15 yards and 40 yards at that location so I set my range finder um, at flashing in the yellow box at 25 and I know if it's slightly past 25 I need to lift it up a little bit if it's slightly under 25 I need to put it down a little bit and of course at night time you can see the flashing on the rangefinder so you can mitigate against that it's not a problem like I said this happens on all of these units including the ATM that I've seen um, but yeah um, recommend that you do that it is a bit of a downside like I say it's a design limitation of this at the moment and hopefully it's something in the future and there's my recommendation a couple of grub screws, screws like you do on laser pointers where you can zero the laser pointer with a grub screw it'd be great to be able to do it on that um, another criticism is the battery okay so they claim eight hours battery for these okay but you at the end of the day that's claims okay if you don't have the rangefinder constantly pinging and you don't have the IR torch on and you're not recording then yes you'll probably get a six to seven hours out of an 18650 battery I was running the IR torch at level two out of three my rangefinder was constantly pinging and I was constantly recording and I got about an hour out of the battery okay but think about it it's an 18650 battery you can just take it out and replace it and away you go um, you're limited by how many 18650 batteries you carry also remember that this battery is powering the rangefinder the IR and the actual scope and the recording think about the ATN the battery in the ATN just powers the ATN. You need a separate battery for your torch and you need a separate battery for your ABL. The guy I go shooting with constantly is like, oh, and he's having to switch three different sets of batteries out. And the last time he went, he forgot to charge his ABL battery up and he had no range finding. And I spent all night range finding for him with a pocket full of 18650s. So it's pros and cons there. Um, I personally like it being replaceable because then I'm in control and all I've got to remember to do is take an eight, some 18650 batteries and I can power the whole unit. I don't have to make sure that my ATN is charged up, which is, and again, if that battery inside the ATN goes dead, you're, you're stuffed, you can't replace it. Then I need batteries, which are probably 18650 batteries for the, for the torch, for the ATN, and then I need the little batteries, for, uh, you, you get the idea. I personally like that. Um, but yeah, really, really nice. Um, and another minor criticism, um, and again, this is minor, I'm nitpicking now, is I would love it if they would allow you variable zoom. At the moment, it is 5.6, or turn the button, turn the dial, 11.2. There's no in-between zooms. Um, I would love it if when you turn that dial, it zoomed 5.66, blah, 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 all the way up to 11, um, like the ATN does. Um, all of the pods have operated like that in the past, um, but uh, yeah, please, please pod. I'm sure you could do that with a firmware update and just allow you to change the zoom like that. It would be really, really nice and appreciated. Um, but yeah, I think those are my only criticisms about it. You know, cost, yeah, it's the price it is. Uh, the rangefinder and the battery, which I don't personally think is a problem with it all, but far, far, far outweighed by the pros. The build, the quality of the eyepiece, the zero in of the crosshairs, the rangefinder, the IR, all in one unit, the weight absolutely knocked it out of the park. Knocked it out of the park. Well done, Pard. Um, this is now my new favourite and my buddy who I go shooting with, he is now wanting to sell his ATN to get one of these. Um, everybody I've shown this to and they've looked through have gone, wow, that's nice. So if you are on the fence about these, certainly get hold of one and look through it. Go to your um, RFS and uh, go and have a look through one if you can and, and you'll be amazed. They are absolutely wonderful. For air rifles, like I said, I'd recommend the 50 version over the 70 for the field of view. Pard, please send me one so I can review it. Um, but I'd love to know your thoughts and your comments. I think this is the new 
market leader. They just smashed it. Um, so I'd love to know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments down below and I'll catch you on the next video, guys.